So, uh, good morning to all of us. Good morning, brothers. Good morning, Sir CJ. Uh, uh, so today, no. So I am uh, Aaron Christian Azinakwa, your speaker for uh, today's discussion. So, uh, in our past discussion, no, we discussed about Immanuel Kant, which is both empiricist and and uh, rationalist, no. Kumbaga, nandito siya sa middle ground, sabi pa nga. So, uh, Immanuel Kant is a big influence of uh, of this, uh, the, the two philosophers that we will be discuss uh, uh, later. So, kaya nga tinatawag itong post-Kantian uh, idealist philosophy. But but before we deepen eh, no, to our uh, discussion, to the, before we go to the main topic, so let us put ourselves in the presence of God. So, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Mary, Queen of your servants, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, idealist philosophy, or what, on another word, is idealism. So, idealism or idealist philosophy is the philosophy that believes that the ultimate nature of reality is ideal or based upon ideas, values, or essences. The external or real world cannot be separated from consciousness, perception, mind, intellect, and reason in the sense of science. So, ito yung nagiging foundation no, ng mga idealism, ng mga idealist. So without no further ado no sino ba ang ating mga uh, kilalanin natin ng ating mga philosopher no so uh so si Fichte uh, year 762 1814 and Hegel seven, year 1770 1831 so you can observe no yung hindi masyado malayo ang gap nila pero parang nauna tong namatay si Hegel I see ano pala So our first na philosopher is Johann Gottlieb Fichte, a German philosopher, no, uh, Fichte was born in 1762, May 1, at Romaneo in Lusatia. He studied theology at universities of Jena and Leipzig and was licensed to preach out, but never actually held the pastorate. He was early attracted to the study of Spinozism which was not without its influence of his later philosophy. His acquaintance with Kant philosophy was the turning point of his life. So he developed a radically revised and rigorously systematic version of transcendental idealism called uh, Wissenschaftler of a doctrine of scientific knowledge and was influenced by Kant works and later was called the bridge between Kant and Hegel. He worked at the University of Jena and wrote several books on philosophy so uh major major artworks or mga major works ni Johann Gottlieb Fichte is his critic of revelation and address to the german nation and the vocation of man so Fichte carefully studied the three major critics of kant and became very much interested in the critical philosophy of kant Fichte trying to expand the work of kant his encounter with kant changed his life so the connection of uh Fechte to Immanuel Kant. So, Fechte was greatly influenced by Kant's philosophy, claiming that it produced a revolution in the manner of his thinking. Fechte produced a manuscript in which he concluded that only a revelation consistent with a critical philosophy is a moral law itself. Kant's philosophy was based on the idea that moral requirements are based on a standard of rationality. He dubbed that cate categorical imperative the study of Fichte's work was neglected until the last four decades, but now he's seen as a unique philosopher and not just a connection between Kant and Hegel. No? So, in, uh, in his time, no, parang hindi pa na, na recognize uh, yung uh, uh, life or uh, yung work ni Hegel, but later on, no, it, it it is uh, recognized na uh, parang nag-stand on its own na yung uh, philosophy or uh, a way of thinking ni, ano, ni, um, ni Fichte. So, two different kinds of idealism according to uh, Johann Gottlieb Fichte. So, 
complete idealism which derives as the system of mental acts from the loss of an intelligent being Ide complete idealism provides a complete explanation of a thing as originating both formally and materially and incomplete idealism which derives this loss from the abstraction from the objects of experience incomplete idealism gives something partial or a formal explanation of the object and tacitly possesses the existence of the matter of the thing in itself so his epistemology so epistemology found no when he found fault with Kantian view of the thing in themselves that are beyond the reach of knowledge and proceeded to reject the notion of the ground similar to those which are commonly used against any casual or representative theory of perception the general problem is how to distinguish among experiences those which are purely subjective and those really objective so the view that experience and judgment are true to the extent that they cohere with one another forming a coherent system so this view is also associated with the doctrine of degrees of truth that all judgment have varying degrees of truth to the extent that they cohere with each other so what does it mean uh, objective reality and the subjective truth uh, when we say objective reality no? ito yung ob objective for example a tree a three, a, tr a three plus a three, a three, no, a puno. And what is the subjective uh, truth? Uh, when you say subjective, no, it's based on a own uh, a, a perceiver or a own perception or a own uh, personal view about this uh, of a thing or this object reality. So which means if there are if they are there are three persons, if there are three persons looking at uh, uh, ob object reality or a, a, a three. Kumbaga, yung isa maybe, yung personal view niya, isa puno. O ano yung nakikita niya? Puno. May the other one, pag nakita niya yung puno, yung iniisip niya, ay may bunga. Di ba? And also, and also yung isa, pwede, pwede, pwede na. So may other thing, no? The third person may think that, uh, parang makita niya na, ay, posible na, Possibly na pera to kasi puno pwede itong pagkapiraan. So in other words na nakadepende sa tao o no kung saan um, yung uh, personal view niya, no? Nakadepende doon yung uh, uh, perception niya sa uh, or judgment niya sa isang uh, this what we call uh, object of reality, no? So so this subjective reality uh, subjective truth na sinasabi natin uh, that cohere, kumbaga they are related to each other though they are have a different perspective. Kumbaga, may iba't iba tayong perspective about a, a thing, pero they, nasabi nga dito, the degrees of truth that all judgment have varying degrees of truth, they holds as a, a small part of, of, of truth. Di ba? Totoo naman. Kung ano yung nagkikita nila, totoo yun. Reality yun. And that's why, you know, uh, it's cohere with each other. In addition, no, sabi dito that this more or less intelligible view was However, complicated by being involved with the view that judgment about the empirical world have a very low degree of truth because they bring with them paradox and contradiction. The sensible world is therefore only appearance and reality must be something else. So, bakit naging paradox and contradictory to? When you say paradox, it is the contradiction of opinion. So, sabi ko nga, di ba? From the words itself, subjective truth, it is based on a personal, personal view of a person, based on his perception. Nagiging contradiction ito because it contradicts uh, it contradicts with each other. Kung baga, kung may iba iba ba tayong pananaw na contradicts each other though they holds a varying degree of truth, a piece of truth. So it means that uh, ito yung it, the, ob, the object reality the object reality is not uh, is not kung baga, hindi to absolute truth kasi there are a contradiction. Ito yung sinasabi ni uh, ni Fekte. Well, based on my um, understanding so experience is ultimately based on mental activity no it is contrasted with realism in which external world is said to have an apparent absolute existence no nag exist lang and uh, uh, the only thing which can be directly known for certain are just ideas so mapapasok ko din ito ang ating reasoning so let's
and it with the quote, no? There exists in man the idea of reason and reasonable acts and thoughts. And he is initiated to realize this idea, not only within himself, but also without himself. And thus one of he wants, there should be around him reasonable being like himself. The doctrine of knowledge, apart from all special and definite knowing, proceeds immediately upon knowing about knowledge itself, in the essential unity in which recognizes knowledge as existing. And it raises the question in the first place, how this knowledge can come into being and what is inward and essential in nature. So, kung ito na, pumapasok na. Na, the use of our uh, doctrine of knowledge na, uh, kumbaga, doctrine of knowledge, the use of a reason, no? Uh, that is essential, no? To that unity that we recognize as knowledge as existing. So, this, our second philosopher, no? Is no, none other than George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. He's also a German philosopher. So he is considered one of the fundamental figures of modern Western philosophy, which his influence extending to the entire range of contemporary philosophical issues, from his ethics to ontology to, to politics, both in analytic and continental tradition. Work with Schelling in Jena in 1799, and he became a professor at Heidelberg, the center of German national romanticism, born in August 27 years, 1770, and died of cholera in November 4, 1831. So, sabi dito, no? Hegel was influenced not by Kant, but also by our Greek thought, especially by Platonist and Neoplatonist conceptions of intelligible word of forms, with a structure of its own. Nevertheless, Hegel's relation to Kant may be roughly characterized by saying that he attempted to restore the function of reason that Kant had forbidden. No? He tries to show that the understanding involves its own paradoxes, which can be resolved only by the use of reason. Oh, ito na. So, so dialectic method, no? If you go back to our ancient mga philosopher, no? Uh, familiar ko si Socrates. The dialectic was a method of discovering truth through questioning and debate. And for Kant, dialectic expressed reason's capacity to reach contradictory conclusion from apparently sound premises. So in um in fact, uh, view, no? Uh it is a process of contradiction that underpins all of the of all reality, a method which reason can pursue in order to resolve any contradiction. It provides the key to understanding how ideas of reason may be charted. So it provides us a system, it provides us an illustration or a chart. So I prepare a video, no? Uh, I do not own this video. I just uh, nakuha ko lang ito and for educational purpose only para mas maintindihan natin tong uh, ano ba itong sinasabi ni affected uh, na dialectic method no it is it was a uh, briefly explained so i want to share it with you so let's begin now hello philo notes friends welcome back for another edition of our daily whiteboard in today's edition i will sketch very briefly the key intuition of hegel's dialectic my aim here is to offer an alternative to the seemingly confusing and at times misleading interpretation of Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel's Dialectic At the heart of the concept of Hegelian dialectic is the idea that every being or everything that exists is contradictory in itself. In other words, everything that exists contains within itself its own negation and the seeds for its own ineluctable destruction and transformation. Thus for Hegel, the dialectic is the formal structure of reality. That is to say, the dialectic is the essence of everything that exists, material or immaterial. The idea of essence is particularly important in understanding Hegelian dialectic. This is because essence denotes the unity or identity of being throughout the actual process of change. This means that, for Hegel, the being at the end of the dialectical process is the same with the being at the beginning of the process. Hence, the being at the end of the dialectical process is simply the actualization of the same being that existed at the beginning of the process, but existed there as an idea. 
Consider, for instance, the way in which an architect actualizes the idea of a house. As we can see, before the house becomes an actual house, it has already existed in the mind of the architect as an idea. So, there was an idea of the house that is a plan of the house before it was actualized. The actual house, therefore, which is the end of the process, is the same with the idea of the house at the beginning of the process. It must be noted, however, that Hegel's concept of unity or identity is not a permanent substratum that defines being, but a process wherein everything copes with its inherent contradictions and unfold itself as a result. For this reason, the idea of essence in Hegelian dialectic should not be viewed from the vantage point of essentialism. Of course, there is no such thing as essence in Hegel that defines being as such. For example, because for Hegel everything is in the constant process of change, we cannot therefore talk of the essence of man. There is no such thing as human nature for Hegel. The concept of unity and identity, therefore, is nothing but the negation of every being. Thus again, Hegel's concept of essence specifically refers to that constant process of change, of constant negation, and not of that which makes a thing truly a thing. The notion of negativity, which is internal to all beings, does not only involve mere contradiction. Negativity, as the essential character of every being, implies that being is always in the process of becoming. That is to say, the process of developing all relations to what being is not. And it is in this process that being actualizes its potentialities by turning itself into its opposite, that is, by negating itself. According to Hegel, in the act of negating itself, being perishes, but at the same time develops its true potentialities by moving into a higher stage. This movement is what Hegel famously calls Aufhebung, or sublation, that is, the perishing of the old and the birth of the new, where the new, however, is just the actualization of the potentialities inherent in the old. As Marcuse writes, a given form of existence cannot unfold its content without perishing. The new must be the actual negation of the old and not a mere correction or revision. To be sure, the new must somehow have existed in the lap of the old, but existed there only as potentiality and its material realization was excluded by the prevailing form of being. The process of becoming explains what Hegel calls the transition from mere potentiality to actuality. As Marcuse writes, when something turns into its opposite, Hegel says, when it contradicts itself, it expresses its essence. For Marcuse, this is the moment of being's self-realization. Being becomes actual. Indeed, this is the moment when being and non-being unite. That is to say, when contradiction is resolved and gives way to another higher form of determinate being. It is important to note at this point that Hegel never used the triadic moment of being in his writing, namely being, non-being, and becoming, or thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Of course, the unfolding of being involves these three moments, but they happened all at once in the same being. Thus, the contradiction does not come from the outside. Negativity is internal to being, according to Hegel. The idea of Aufhebung, or sublation, that is the realization of what being is not, is also internal to being. Hence, Hegel said that, Being's ineluctable self-destruction, or non-being according to the English translation, and its eventual transformation, or becoming, is internal to being itself. 
Let's take, for instance, the transformation of the seed into a seedling. If the seed or being is not yet ready to self-destruct and transform itself into a seedling, it remains a seed. The sunshine, the soil, the water, and other factors necessary for the transformation of the seed into a seedling are useless if the seed, again, is not yet ready for self-destruction and transformation. Hence, the contradiction of the seed is internal to the seed itself. Indeed, it is the seed that contradicts itself. The sunshine, the soil, the water, etc. do not pose themselves as contradiction or non-being of the seed. They are simply factors that could help the seed in contradicting and eventually transforming itself into a seedling. Hence again, the contradiction or non-being and the eventual transformation of the seed into a seedling or becoming happened all at once in the same being, that is, the seed. In the famous idea of the self-destruction of the capitalist society, the contradiction or non-being of the capitalist society is internal to the capitalist society itself. The proletarians that rebel against the capitalist society do not pose themselves as contradiction or non-being. The proletarians are simply agents of social transformation whose role is simply to arrest the situation. That is, take advantage of the situation when the capitalism, through its internal contradictions, is ready to self-destruct. For sure, a million ants cannot topple down a strong and healthy snake. Only when the snake is weak and dying, which is the snake's contradiction of itself, can the ants take advantage of the situation and eat the snake. Alright, that's it for today. Keep looking forward to our series of daily whiteboard editions as we try to make the so so hope you like the ano the uh, the terms that was uh, presented in the video so theory of knowledge no hegel's theory of knowledge may be found partly in his science of logic and partly uh, in his science partly in his phenomenology of mind no what so uh, reality you know according to hegel is constructed by the mind and only the mind doesn't know this at first mind thinks reality is out there mind is therefore alienated from itself Recognizing that reality is its own creation, it reconciles mind within itself. Uh, reason no, is a progressive, uh, in other words, human knowledge is constantly expanding in progressing criteria. Uh, thus, all reality was interrelated with one vast complex system or a whole which he called the absolute. So, in addition, reality is identical to thought. The real is rational and the rational is real. Reality is a rational process. The absolute emerges through critique of itself, something like critical or introspection of whatever stages of consciousness it happened to be at and which will result in total consciousness or absolute knowing. So the goal of this dialectic method can be, uh, be most clearly understood at the level of reason. As finite reason progresses in understanding, the absolute progress towards full self-knowledge Indeed, the absolute comes to know itself through the human mind's increased understanding of reality or the absolute. So, kumbaga, ano ba yung mga keyword, no? When you say a phenomenology of mind, no? Sa so, uh, theory of knowledge ni, ni, Hege, ni Hegel is that the uh, uh, reason or synthesis, consciousness and self-consciousness. So, Hegel begins by pointing out that consciousness appears to be at to be an apprehension of what is immediate, of what is, which is, it appears. A confortation of the ego which something else has affected also suppose. Since knowledge thus turns out to be a mediated knowledge, a knowledge which is possible only through the medium of universals and which is not direct knowledge of reality. This contradiction is resolved only because the intellect provides us with a higher universal which constitute the basis or condition of applying the lower order, universal in the sense perception, this is something which can be discerned only by intellect, which does produce a synthesis of the contradiction apparent with consciousness, 
This, of course, does not end of matter for Hegel, as the phenomena of consciousness are equally phenomena of self-consciousness. The position between consciousness and self-consciousness requires a synthesis or by reason. So, in conclusion, no, uh, I will illustrate my learning, no, as an iceberg, you know, in the past forma formation class, no, I remember, our master taught us that the small part of us in the, in the consciousness, no, is a small part of us is conscious and the rest is unconscious. So, how is it related to the given topic, no? So, these two philosophers, as I observe, no, parang, nakafocus sila sa self, no? The self or consciousness as the key to absolute knowing, the use of proper, uh, uh, methods of reason that help us to boost our full potential that may lead out to the absolute knowing. So, in other words, that uh, we need to drive uh, drive through a deeper understanding of ourselves, uh, consciousness that invests self-awareness and self-consciousness, and the use of reason as the process that may lead out to the absolute knowing. So, medyo, as you can observe, medyo magulo, uh, ako din ha, ay naguguluhan but so uh, please bear with me brothers no uh, please be reminded that uh, all of the all all you uh, what you, what you hear is, ay ano yung kung ano yung mga kung ano yung naririnig nyo uh, kung ano yung naririnig nyo na discuss sa topic na ito ano uh, ay based on my personal personal insight pa din kung may uh, kumbaga kung may view kayo it might be uh, a good a good uh, view or ex example no so, so we started in the prayer, so let's close it with the prayer. But because we, before we close, no, pagana muna sa ating mga mga nakakaumay na na mga pangyayari. Palang na starter ako dito eh. Hindi ko na malaman ng gagawin ko eh. So, so meet my meet my classmates so thank you very much for your uh, kindness for listening and that's all thank you uh, god bless us all uh, thank you sir